Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, I know I said I was done with 2042, but against my expectations, DICE has actually addressed one of my biggest bugbears about the game, and that's the discrepancy between the Condor and the MI240 Hind. I really wasn't expecting this, but since it's been done, let's have a look at it. Now, take a look at this scene playing out right now. Hands up if it looks familiar. You get onto point, you go into hover mode, you see that there's danger, and you try to get away in time. Now the first but least important thing DICE has done is speed up the transition from VTOL to flight mode, as you're seeing here. We'll talk more about it through the video, but for those of you who don't make it that far and just up front to make my point, while I appreciate this change is very welcome, I really don't think it's gone far enough because it doesn't really shift the dial on the speed, but far more importantly, it's done nothing to address the lack of mobility when you're actually in VTOL mode. You are still just as slow and clunky as ever, particularly compared to the MI240 Superhind. So I really don't think they've done enough to stop scenes like this constantly playing out, where you get seen by an attack helicopter, you try to get away, but there's nothing you can do. One of the reasons why I never covered the Condor on this channel is because, absolutely truthfully, up until the recent changes, I never really had an answer for this. I mean, what do I tell anybody? If you get unlucky, if you get caught out in VTOL mode, there's no skill-based way to get out of it. You're just going to get cooked by anyone, really. And for those who may not know, I know some people who watch this channel aren't actually active battlefield players. On the Russian side, you have the Mi-240 Superhind. Just look how maneuverable this is. You can finesse into cover to avoid the jet. The moment pressure is applied, you can immediately speed away. And in the six seconds that your flare lasts to protect you from lock-on, and the additional two seconds for a lock to be reacquired, you can make it to any point of safety on the map. It is just all round superior to the Condor. Let's just take a look at one more example to see how smooth the hind is by comparison. So I managed to get in, apply some pressure, drop my guys off, and get back to cover all within the 8 second window. I was never in danger. And this is why the second piece of news is so important. The Americans finally have access to a transport helicopter, the UH-60. And, forgive my language, about bloody time. Pilots now actually have a chance to get their team into the hottest locations on the map and get out without losing the vehicle. In addition to that, we don't just have to sit there staring at missiles flying straight at us. We can actually dodge now. We can also get the much smaller, much more maneuverable UH-60 into locations to drop off our teams that were very, very hard to get a Condor into. Not saying it couldn't be done, but this is a lot easier. The bad news though is that the UH-60 is squishy. Two stingers downs it, and even one can knock it off course. And if a cab with an AA flat cannon gets in range, you're just going to get obliterated. You also lose the 50 cal off of the UH-60. So, that brings us to the heart of the video. If you're Russia, you're never going to pick the UH-60. It'd be madness to pick it over the hind. But if you're playing USA, you now have a legitimate choice to make, Condor or UH-60. So very simply, in part one, I'd like to share what I know about the Condor. Maybe you'll find it useful. And part two, explore the UH-60. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So I think a logical place to start, particularly as DICE sped up the transition from VTOL to flight mode, is to point out that the Condor is not only the fastest vehicle in the game, but it will also reach the mid or far objectives, particularly the start of the round, significantly more quickly than the UH-60 can which gives it a massive edge over the UH-60 as a starting vehicle. I went over this quite extensively in my MI-240 Hind video, but this is really important because particularly when you're playing Conquest, this is the way you win the game, by capturing objectives and sectors. And there's an enormous advantage in being the first mover. But let's not go over all ground, let's just repeat only what we have to. As you're seeing here, you arrive at the midpoint, you drop off your team, and there's no need to hang around. And this is where the Condor shines, because you've got the speed and the armor to make a really cheeky run at the far objectives if the other team ignored them. You can drop off your people and get back without any real danger of actually losing the vehicle, so it's a smart move. 
But when playing Condor, particularly at the kickoff, you need to keep your eye open for the biggest threat of all, which is if the Mi-240 Hind also challenges you for the same objective. For this map, if there's nobody in my way, I'll make a play for E1, but you see the Hind? Don't even think about challenging it in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you will lose. Just break off and go and capture the farthest objective you can without putting your vehicle at risk. And once you've done that, switch back to flight mode, get out of there. The Condor really shines on the 128 maps, particularly the very large ones like Discarded, where, for example, the Sector B is very, very much out on a wing, and you as the Condor pilot will absolutely be the first person to arrive on scene if you go for it. And that's a massive plus one over the UH-60. And finally, and why I'm going to let this clip run a little bit, if you see that the other side's Mi-240 hind is overcommitted or is being distracted by other players that are dogging it, Go gang up on it. Never fight it one-on-one, -on -one, but if you can sneak in there as part of a wider group, take the chance. So hopefully what I'm saying there about the opening makes sense and why the Condor is the better choice than the UH-60. But let's talk about something that I found really challenging with the Condor, and that is surviving Nightbird attacks. My advice if you get jumped is to go to flight mode and head straight for the ceiling. And remember, do not hit the repair button no matter how bad it's looking until you get clear. Otherwise, it's just going to get cancelled. Even the slightest damage is enough to interrupt the repair. Once you're up there, switch to VTOL mode and feel free to let your gunners fire down if you got any. As you can see in that clip, I had my tier 1 unlocked, but this is a very, very early clip. I even had a different name back then. And this is a trick I've been doing since forever. And it really does have a high probability of success. The Nightbird is an absolute pain, but it does take a little bit of time to take you down because you have very thick armor. So in absence of a better idea, I suggest you give it a try. Being chased by a jet is a bit different because the jet can just follow you up into the sky. So if you're playing on a map that has it, for example, Kaleidoscope or Hourglass, etc., try to lose the jets in the buildings. Very few pilots are actually good enough to maneuver in here to take you out. But if you don't have that luxury as I see it, there's only three options. The first, as you're seeing here, is if the pilot is a little bit inexperienced, you can actually trick them by flying hard and fast, making them think it's a chase, and then slamming the brakes on. This does actually work. Oh, wow. <laughs> Again, this is much easier to do in a helicopter, but you got to work with what you got, right? The next thing you can do if you feel like taking your chances is go all the way to the ceiling and trust your gunners. Now if you happen to notice that the jet equipped hydropods, I really wouldn't recommend doing this, but uh, if you think you got a good chance that they didn't, your arm is pretty thick and there's a good chance you're going to win the fight. Support package available. And finally, not the most glorious, but certainly one of the safest, is to kite the enemy jet. So as long as you keep moving fast and keep changing your direction, it's very unlikely they're going to be able to hit you with the hydropods or score enough sustained damage to take you down quickly. They'll get you in the end, but it's going to take them a while to do it. And whilst you're kiting, you're hoping for one or two things. One, that someone on your team is going to intervene to help you and take the pressure off. Or two, as you're going to see here, as you're going around, you'll find an opportunity to slam the brakes on and get a little bit of relief and escape the chase. If anybody has other ideas, please let us know, because that's all I got. Right, so the next thing I want to talk about, particularly in the context of the Condor versus the UH-60, is what I'm going to call fight or flight. So when you go into capture an objective, there's no way around it. You have to stick around if you want to actually complete the capture. So you have to decide quickly if it's safe to stay like it is at the moment, or is the situation turning against you? So I just got double hit by an RPG there, which by the way would have been the end of the UH-60, so it's time to get out. Now this clip's quite interesting because I'm about to face a similar but different situation, which means I actually made the choice to stay. So what I'd like you to notice here is I'm about to get locked by Stinger missiles, but I make the conscious decision that I can soak this. A Stinger is not nearly as dangerous as an RPG, I can take the damage for the sake of taking the objective. Charlie, 
That third missile, even if it had held, wouldn't have been enough to take me down and I've still got my repair. I just quickly moved to the blind side of the building and pop it so my repair doesn't get interrupted and everything was fine. Off I go to the next objective and basically repeat the thought process. The challenge though is when it gets a little bit more salty like this one I'm about to show you. So coming in, we immediately see an M5 or an RPG screaming off, so we know there's someone down there. Okay, we factored that in, one hit. Let's see what else I've got. So I've got a flare if they make good on that missile. Okay, double M5 RPG and this thing is only seconds away. You only get protection for six seconds, so it's definitely time to leave and repair, as you're seeing there. This is a big advantage the Condor has over the UH-60. It can soak damage. But being completely honest, it's impossible to know what's down there. That's the simple truth. So don't beat yourself up or take crap off other people if you get caught out. One moment you think you're dealing with the Leeds player who doesn't have very good aim, the next minute... You find out maneuverability just might be better than armor after all. Right, this brings us to something we've touched on a couple times throughout the video, and that's air-to-air -air fights. Obviously, without saying, first of all, check you've actually got a gunner before moving into position. But as you're going to see here, even if you have all three seats occupied, this attack helicopter very easily could have made a different decision, and instead of running, could have gone vertical, and because of its speed advantage, would very, very quickly have got above me. So that first example there I've given you is actually a bit of an example of how not to fly. This one went a lot better. You want to enter VTOL mode when you are significantly above your opponent. So you give yourself the time to take them out before they can ascend. For the avoidance of doubt, as I'll show you now, a helicopter will always beat a Condor in a race to the ceiling. And Condors cannot fire up. This is a huge advantage that the UH-60 and the Super Hind have over the Condor. And at the end of the day, no matter how well you tiered up as the pilot, if your gunners cook the guns, it's not going to go well. Even the latest patch wouldn't have changed the outcome of that fight. And finally, don't forget that the Condor can equip with 50mm, so you're very helpful at taking out ground vehicles. The UH-60 can't do anything about them, they've only got miniguns. So now that we've run through the Condor, why don't we go across and take a look at the UH-60? With all its shortcomings, is it time to drop the Condor? Well, let's be fair about this. First of all, as we said at the outset of the video, the UH-60 is squishy. Vehicle's in bad shape. The UH-60 is quite slow, and it only takes two stingers to see it off. Target destroyed! That said, the UH-60 can soak an empath tank shell, if it has full health. Now that first one might have been a bit of a glitch, so uh, let's try a second one and see what happens. Knocked it for six, but it took it. And unlike the attack helicopter, it does take two RPGs to down the UH-60. If it has a little bit of damage, like that, you can do it in one, but if it's on full health, as I'll prove to you, one isn't enough. Again, really knocked it for six, which probably contributed to the crash, but anyway. And as we've touched on a few times, in terms of armament, the UH-60 only has two miniguns, meaning it has almost no capability to take on ground armor, and a bit of a disadvantage relative to the Hind and Condor in aerial fights, providing, of course, you're above your target. What I found this has meant over the opening couple nights of using it is that the UH-60 is very, very good for taking advantage of its maneuverability and two miniguns, to go around and try and clean out all of those campers, people who are hiding on the mountains with their launchers and their soft lambs, sniper rifles, etc. And that's not to be sniffed at, that's actually quite useful. Its ability to go very low and stay in control is also fantastically useful for sneaking onto the back line and mowing down said campers. There's no way a Condor could have snuck into position like that. That's a helicopter only move. Now obviously this isn't new, we've been doing this with the Mi-240 Hind since forever. 
But my goodness, it is nice to be able to start doing this playing on the US side. And this ability to fly low, be sneaky, and the additional maneuverability means survivability on top of the objective is actually pretty good. You can keep swaying to avoid those snipers, keep your foot on the pedal in case you need to suddenly change direction if you see a Lissile or anything else incoming, and it's generally, in my opinion, all round better than the Condor for surviving in a hot area of the map. So particularly in the mid and end stages of the round, I'm definitely going to be picking the UH-60 over the Condor from now on. I love being able to just very quickly make my escape, and no worries. So as I play us out with a little bit of UH-60 fun, what are my conclusions from all of this? Well, I'm a little disappointed in the UH-60 in that it is very much subpar compared to the Mi-240 Hind. It doesn't have the 50mm cannon, it's got weaker armor, and it carries one less passenger. It's also inferior to the Condor, in my opinion, in the opening stages of the round, where the Condor speed is actually a huge advantage. Beyond that, though, I'm just going to say it straight. I'm a helicopter guy. I have never liked the Condor. Sorry, I said it. I've always been doing my best to make do with it, rather than actually thinking it was good, and secretly crying every time I didn't get Russia, even though I love the Apache far more than the uh, Hokum, but digression. You just can't beat a helicopter for maneuverability and getting in and out. My biggest complaint though, DICE didn't give us a tier 1. I've got nothing to work towards. Where's my black and red paint job? Come on. Priorities people, priorities. <laughs> right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're enjoying the UH-60. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful weekend. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.